Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the DUI Guy Live. In a few minutes, Ben Chu is going to be doing a live interview. And we are going to be watching and commenting on it together. Um, how's everybody doing tonight? Are you all excited for this? Should be very interesting. Um, some people were confused. I think they thought I was the one doing the interview to Ben Chu. Uh, I am not, at least not yet. But I will definitely, given the opportunity, would be happy to interview him, of course. Lawyer to lawyer, I think it's going to be extremely interesting. But with that said, let's take a look and see how close are we to the interview itself. Should be around the corner. Uh, it should be starting within the next couple of minutes. So let's get Mr. Ben Chu on the big screen. That's not it. This is it. Let's get him on the big screen, you guys. Um, I love this man. He's... Uh, he has been an inspiration for lawyers everywhere, along with Camille. Um, they have definitely done the impossible. Um, they helped a man clear his name against a woman's false allegations. I mean, that has it's an unprecedented move, literally unprecedented. None of, nothing of this magnitude has ever happened in the history of humanity. And he's just so lovable and affable, you know, generally speaking. Uh, oh, I wish I was doing the interview. I would, I would kill uh, for that interview. Thank you very much, Joe Pancakes. Thank you for the love. Um, I think I saw another one. Yeah, almost 15K on the donation that concluded. Super sticker, thank you, cheese burgers. I don't know if there were any other ones while I was gone. Um, let's see if there were any. I think that's it now it's about to start it's about to start literally any second now i'm refreshing just to make sure yeah there it goes there's the timer minute 21 minute and 20 seconds so let's buckle down and enjoy the show i hope you guys are as excited as i am I think it's going to be a fantastic interview, especially, um, you know, Chanley is a lawyer herself. She's the one that's going to be conducting the interview. And um, despite maybe having our differences, I still have a lot of respect for Chanley. I still have a lot of respect for Chanley. She is, uh, she seems to be on the good side. A lot of what she's done is not her fault. Uh, I understand that she is just, uh, as we like to say, a talking head sometimes. It's not her fault. So I, I forgive and forget. I like to bury the hatchet. Don't forget to like this video. Comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this content. All right. It's 8 o'clock, 7 central. Here we are. Having served her time in prison, Dixie Shanahan has returned to her rural Iowa home. She declined to be interviewed for this program. For many others who are still suffering from abuse, we urge you to contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It's completely confidential, and they can help you find a way 
to safety. I'm Cameron Hall. Thank you for watching Someone They Knew. Thank you, Gina and Lauren. Yeah, I'm doing much better. Thank you for asking. Here we go. It was the case that many said was virtually impossible to win. A celebrity suing for defamation in the United States of America, land of the First Amendment. Johnny Depp, an admitted drug user, accusing his ex, Amber Heard, of purposely lying about being abused by Depp and destroying his reputation and career. It was a trial which happened after Johnny lost a similar case against a tabloid in the UK. Ben Chu, lead attorney for Johnny's legal team, sat down with Court TV's Chanley Painter today. The verdict came in, our hearts were in our throats. We, we were hopeful, but not presumptuous tonight we take a look at the entire interview as ben chu takes us behind the curtain revealing what it was like to represent one of the most famous actors in the world he looked to me and my team for that and that was a great honor and privilege and we knew that it was the most important case that Johnny had ever been involved with. And reacting to statements made by Amber's attorney after the $15 million verdict. That was almost more disappointing than her statement about evidence being kept out because I construed that as an affront to the jury. And now the interview with the winning attorney from the trial of this century, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Uh, wow, what a show we have in store for you this hour. Uh, unbelievable insight that you will get. I wanted to start, though, um, when you're young, right, and, and you're thinking about, what do I want to be when I grow up? And, and for lots of us, we want to be, you know, maybe a rock star. That would be like a, a great career, right? Get up on stage. How about a lawyer rock star? your name. Um, asking for your autograph, following you around, making tons of money, jetting around the world. Um, Thank you, Debbie. It'd be a great life, right? At least that's what you think. It would be a great life. You know, you want to be a rock star or whatever your rock star is. You know, you want to be famous. You want to be rich, all that sort okay, of stuff. Okay, get to the fucking point, and Broski. Then, you know, reality checks in and at a certain point in your life, you're like, okay, I get it. I can't sing. I'm never going to be a rock star. I mean... Um, I'd get booed off the stage during karaoke, for goodness sake. So, you know, you end up, maybe you go to law school, right? And you go to law school, and, and you give up the dream. The original dream of being oh, the rock Oh, and now he's got a time together. And now you have new dreams, you know, things that you want to oh accomplish. God. This is you know, so tacky. After going to law school, maybe you want to be, um, we'll be a, a rock star lawyer. Or you oh, my be a God. judge someday. We'll bring you or you just want to help get justice for people who, who need a voice. And, and that's admirable, obviously. And a great career. But you've given up that original dream of being the rock star. And for lawyers, you know, day in and day out, what do you do? I mean, you could be uh, just the greatest litigator in the world and, and be great at depositions and filing motions and making arguments in front of judges. And then at the end of the day, cool and it's best case nuts. scenario, maybe like one of your colleagues was in Thanks, the courtroom Dad. and says, hey, that was a great argument you made. Or the judge will give you a little nod. Or even your client will say, dude thanks, so counselor, you really made a difference. Jesus Christ. Right? That's that's usually like the best you can do as a lawyer who's really good at their job. Like, really good at your job. And then this happens, Somebody right? Somebody give this guy a new uh, job. Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. And, and it was different. It was way different for Johnny Depp's legal team. I mean, you had to be there in Fairfax County, Virginia. I mean... Yeah, they were there screaming for Johnny Depp, obviously. That's been his life. He literally is a rock star and an actor, oh right? God. But I'm going to fall asleep. His lawyers became stars, oh. right? It, it happened on social media, the internet, but at the courthouse, that's where you really, it's like the really worst build up felt in the history of fucking The excitement, the anticipation. Me I mean, people gathered right, outside when the, the door, somebody the fucking front door, me. just waiting for the moment 
that right. one of these lawyers, like, are you kidding lawyers me, is going to step outside so I can scream and cheer and 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 say their name, He's maybe get talking? a picture with them. Um, amazing, amazing. They became you know rock what's stars. Amazing? Not you. And guess what happened? Chanley Painter and the rock star together oh, today okay, in fantastic. the Big Apple, New oh, York yeah. City, and we've got. Uh, that interview to play for you, but first let's bring in our rock star. Court this is TV what you should have fucking started Chandler with. Painter, uh, joining us from New York, New York. Great to see you, Chanley. It's Saturday um, night. Uh, great job with the interview. I mean, the folks are going to see it in just a second, but oh my um, fucking god! How is Ben Chu handling this new rock star status that he has? <laughs> Will you please stop? My skin in is the crawling. most humble way possible. What a nice guy. I mean, he's so affable and just congenial. Hey, he's approachable and he's just taking this in stride. He almost feels embarrassed at all the attention could, that like, he's been getting over the last several thing. weeks, like, Vinny. Uh, great to be button? with you. I am, yes, I am here in New York City. Now, Johnny Depp may be across the pond in the UK, but his attorneys are here in New York. So we had to come here in person to meet with them. And I was very excited to sit down with Ben. Into. We were limited on the amount of time that we had with him. I didn't even get to three pages of my multiple page outline with him, Vinny, but what we did glean, you made an such outline? key what is this insights behind Chandler, the scenes, things our cameras may not have seen during the six-week six trial, and I can't wait for our viewers to watch it all. And it's so appropriate yeah. that you were timed, <laughs> just like the lawyers were timed during the trial. You know, all right, you've got this much time to get it all in. So let's jump right in. Let's Someone take a look. A Chandler Painter speaking with Ben Chu um, here uh, talking about, you know, getting involved with Johnny Depp and getting involved in the trial. They're milking of this, this for like let's everything it has. <laughs> There we go. We lived and breathed this trial for six weeks, but you, your legal team, lived and breathed this trial for years. Uh, this was filed in 2019. You guys have been working. I looked through the court file. There are hundreds of documents back and forth in this case file. So take us back a little bit to how you got involved in this case and how you maybe approached this trial because you were representing Johnny Depp. Well, I, I'd had the pleasure and honor of representing Johnny in a couple of other cases against his former manager and against his former attorney. So when this case came to be thought of, uh, he looked to me and my team for that, and that was a great honor and privilege. And we knew that it was the most important case that Johnny had ever been involved with. So we gave a lot of thought to the personnel we were going to bring to bear. And we assembled what I think is the best team our firm could muster. And we had people from our Orange County office, people from our New York office, people from our Boston office, and people from our office here in DC. Uh, in DC. Dozens, it's dozens of attorneys, uh, the whole team, like an army, I think is what I called them, of attorneys. And small uh, army. Small <laughs> army. And you, and you delegated certain roles. Uh, but this was a lot of unglamorous unglamor or unspectacular preparation, I think, in preparing for this case. Give us an idea, if you can, the amount of hours that your team put in. It was a massive amount of hours. Yeah. And there were also, in the years leading up, and you're right, we filed it on March 1, 2019. Miss um, Hurd's team had at least three sets of dispositive motions seeking dismissal of the claims on various legal grounds. So that was something we had to contend with. There was also a, a lot of discovery, a lot of document discovery, and a lot and many, many depositions. How involved was he in the preparation of this trial in the day-to-day -day of the testimony? Quite a bit. Um, he wanted to know exactly what we were doing, who we were speaking to. He had a lot, we you know, without disclosing attorney-client privilege, he had a very heavy input into into the strategy. He's he's a super bright and thoughtful person. So it's very helpful to have a client so involved in the process. And both Johnny and Amber took the stand in this trial. Let's start with Johnny's testimony. How did you help him prepare for the days he was on the stand? Mostly it was Jessica Myers, who's a very talented attorney in our New York office. We tried to match up attorney with witness. And it was our collective thought that Jessica and Johnny were a good match. They're both very quick, they're very, very smart and diligent, and it really worked out well. So most of the 
preparation was one-on-one Jessica and Johnny or with Camille or me. Um, we brought Wayne Dennison from our Boston office to come in and play the heavy and um, a role Wayne, he played very well. Great cross-examiner, by the way. Oh, well, I think Wayne is the best. He's terrific. So he came in to play the part of Ben Rottenborn, cross-examiner, because we anticipated they would put a man on Johnny and try to get him riled up. So I think Johnny was well prepared. But as to the substance of his testimony, that was all Johnny. We, we of course, had suggestions, as you do with any witness, but the words were all his. On that cross, because there were moments that went viral from that cross-examination. Thank you. So I'll just, okay, I'll yeah. just stop talking. Um, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I want to be respectful of the court's problem, time and the jury's time. Um, Sorry. I just said I want to be respectful of the court's time and the jury's time, and I, I trust that you do too. So, um, well, I don't feel you, like I'm wasting anyone's time. Sir. Could you pull up Exhibit 408, please? And Ben Rottenborn really inundating <laughs> the jury, everyone with, like you've mentioned, these text messages, these audios, trying to paint a darker picture of the beloved movie star. What advice did you give him to handle that? To just agree, you know, with Rottenborn? What did you tell well, him? Well, we just told him to keep his cool, and he did. And I think. Since we, I think to some extent, hopefully we inoculated the jury a little bit of that. Were you watching the jury during this? Did you have any observations of how they took him in? We tried to be careful about that. We didn't want the jury to think that we were being overly intrusive. And they were hard to read when you did look at them. But I thought, and he's a, a very effective examiner, but I thought the repetition of bad texts didn't resonate that much because in none of those texts was there any uh, admission or suggestion that he had done any of these things. All right, folks, we're just getting started. Oh, Chandler my God, Pinch are staying you with fucking us the whole hour. Me. I want to get to this commercial quickly because we have so much more to show, folks, including Johnny being bad. How did he handle and deal with those text messages? Somebody please shoot uh, me. Chanley's asking all the right questions tonight. Let's take a look. Oh my God. Why is he back? What the fuck is going on here? Everything was going so well. Why can you not like have a proper interview for fuck's sake? It was going terribly and then we got a moment of justice and now we're back to fucking it's like Roddenborn's cross-examination it's not at a lane level cross-examination yet it's getting there though this is a phenomenal commercial like what the fuck is this it's called television yeah I guess TV sucks switch to Netflix This is the best commercial ever. Like, I guess YouTube doesn't do commercials. I, I don't. Mm. We're going to have to do this for like a whole hour. Are there going to be like seven more of these? Jesus, God. Oh, my God. Oh, please stop. Why did I do this? I should have like watched it after the fact or something. I don't know. I should have probably like watched it after and then like kind of snip snipped it. I don't know. Um, what do we do during commercial breaks? Read super chats? Okay, read super chats. What if any commercials will this interview have? Well, Shima Pasta, let me tell you. Core TV will be right back after these messages. Right now, you're watching a Colgate commercial. Grandma, I have my toothpaste over here. Well, Grandsonny, would you like to try to do toothpaste from Colgate? Well, yes, Grandma. Ma, thank you very much. <laughs> you from Colgate, toothpaste for kids. Like, what the fuck? Your ADHD is not tolerating this. You got that right, Pinky. Um, he likes the sound of his own voice. That's for fucking true, Elk. Um, am I doing my own commercials? What the fuck is going on here? 
Um, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Um, please do all the commercials from now on, Amy. Uh, I need I need to think of some. Hold on. Um, okay, so what can what else can we do? New from Dove Soap. Soap for your butthole. Use this new and improved Dove soap. Wow, this feels so fantastic on my bum bum tush. Yeah, that's right. Dove soap only from Dove for your bum bum. Tampons? No, I'm not touching that. Dog food commercial now? That's right, Sparky. New from Chow Chow. Dog food for dogs. Tastes like fucking dog food, just like every other dog food. Have you tried dog food? You don't know what dog food fucking tastes like. It tastes like dog food. They all taste like dog food. Viagra, make you hard again. Feel 20 again. Tampons, have you been struggling with fountains of bleeding? New from what brands make tampons? Temponia. Learning with worthy.com. Oh. Here we go. We're back. You text Mr. Bettany, let's burn Amber. Three exclamation points. You say, let's drown her before we burn her. Three exclamation points. After you said, let's drown her before we burn her, Mr. Depp, you yeah. said, I will f her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she is dead. That's what you said that you would do after you burned her and after you drowned her. Did I read that right? You certainly did, yes. You're an excellent reader of words, you fuckhead. Some difficult stuff that Johnny Depp had to deal with on the on the witness stand. How do you prepare for all that? Still with me, Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who spoke with the lead attorney from his team, Ben Chu, today. Um, that had to be a big part of what they had to do here the because there was so much of this It'll get so much bad better rating. character kind of evidence directly related uh, and connected to Johnny Depp in his case. They literally lost 5,000 people. Absolutely, and I, I talked about that with Ben Chu. I said, was there a moment when you're here going through discovery in this case, you're uh, conducting depositions that you turned to Johnny Depp and said, are you sure you want to go through with this given what they knew the jury would hear and how Amber Heard's team would try to paint him on the witness stand as the abuser and whatnot. And, and he said, Yes, he did have that moment with Johnny Depp. And for Johnny, this was worth it because he had to get his truth out there. He had to do it for his children, whatever it took. He knew the risk about it and, and he wanted to go forward. And he did, like we played earlier, prepare with the team of attorneys. His time on the witness stand, he directed how he would tell his story. And it was so interesting to me, Vinny, to hear that Wayne Dennison, really one of the unsung heroes of Depp's team, the cross-examiner of most all of the experts, brought forth, really did uh, hold him. Johnny Depp's feet to the fire, trying to prepare him for that cross, which they just told him just to keep us cool and be himself. Absolutely. All right, let's get back to Chanley's interview with Ben Chu. Johnny, be cool. Here we go. All right. So during the trial, there was a lot of unflattering, as kind of mentioned, exposure into Johnny and Amber's relationship at any point you know when you're reading through the discovery that you mentioned or the depositions that you're conducting did you think of asking johnny are you really sure if this is what you want to do we'd crossed that rubicon before and we we knew that there were some unflattering texts um mostly done after the allegations were made by miss heard so we thought that those needed to be brought out affirmatively by our side and put into context. Uh, so we did that. I mean, we never tried to portray Mr. Depp as a saint. He's a man who owns his faults. We didn't want to hide those from the jury. He took ownership of his struggles with alcohol and drugs, and he took ownership of, of texts that were private texts, never intended to be seen by the by the world or by Miss Heard in, in no way. Um, but he, 
he really took accountability for that and he thought about it very carefully before we filed the complaint. Okay, I'm running out of time, but I have to ask Amber Heard on the stand. Is that it? Um, she spent several days. She talked about really horrible allegations. Jury ultimately didn't believe her. Why do you think that is? I don't want to speculate. I think there was a contrast between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard in terms of taking accountability. I think Mr. Depp took accountability and Ms. Heard, there seemed to be very few subjects on which she was willing to make any kind of concessions. And I think there may have been a credibility gap. Here, real quick, uh, you went yeah. viral with your fist pump for Kate Moss. Take us back to that moment. What was going through your mind? When I heard Ms. Heard oh, say yeah, yeah. that she punched Mr. Depp because she was afraid that he would push her sister Whitney down the stairs like he pushed Kate Moss. I lost my composure for a moment and did a fist bump because I knew that that was not going to be corroborated by Ms. Moss. And fortunately, Ms. Moss, who had never testified in any proceeding, came forward affirmatively to say that that was not the case. Johnny had never pushed her, had never hit her, had never kicked her. Yep. And how important was that testimony to your case, do you think? Uh, I thought it was very, very important because yeah. this is a case about credibility. Yes. And that went directly to credibility. Yeah. Were there any turning points in this trial as you look back on it to say, oh, that was where really momentum turned our way? I thought there were three. I think one was the totality of Johnny's testimony, uh, mm -hmm. the totality of Ms. Hurd's testimony, and mm -hmm. then finally, in closing, when Camille and I had an opportunity to kind of recapitulate and put it all in context. The appeal, uh, what can you tell us? The uh, Hertz team wants to appeal this case. Do you plan to fight it? Does yeah. Depp really want you know, 8.35 million from her? As Johnny said in his testimony, and we said in closing, this is not about money for Johnny anyway. Mm -hmm. This is about restoring yes. his reputation and getting his life back. So it's not about money. As far as the appeal, I have no idea what grounds they're going to allege, but we don't think that there are any viable basis for appeal. And, uh, and there is one judgment against Johnny, and that's appealable if you if you wanted to. That would that would be to the extent there's no global resolution that that's something that we'd have to consider. I have to talk about you and Camille Vasquez really skyrocketing into the spotlight. What has that been like to do it? <laughs> have you ever expected anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> the alpacas! The alpacas! I didn't expect anything like that. I don't think Camille did either, but she's handling it wonderfully. And <laughs> Can you send our congratulations on to her for being promoted yes, to partner? Please. I will. And uh, is there anything else that you would like to say? Anything else that I haven't asked you that you want to make sure you say? No, we just wanted to thank you all, and we wanted to thank the jury and the court for and the court personnel for all the, all the work that they did. And... We're very appreciative. And Ms. Mr. Depp really wanted to thank everybody. Sure. And thank you for your time oh, again. You. I appreciate it so much. I have like three oh. more pages, but that's okay. Oh. <laughs> what? We've got more of the interview. We're playing it in a little different order than it happened in real time. So we've oh. got much oh. more ahead this hour. Let me bring in our guest oh, my. joining us tonight in no, New York, no, New York, no, nationally no, known no, psychotherapist, no, okay. currently no, the host of. Nope, nope. We're done. All right. This is my commercial break. Fuck you guys. Not interested in listening to your opinions. You are irrelevant. Um, I'm going to go to some super chats. You guys are more important than these fucking talking heads. Um, uh, Chigger Run says, I just realized at the beginning the announcer's, uh, the announcer names Johnny's an admitted drug user, but not Amber. I noticed that too. I was like, Amber is an admitted drug user as well. Not the first time I noticed people doing that because they like throwing Johnny under the bus because he's a bigger figure, whereas Amber Heard is a fucking nobody. Um, uh, Chanley is doing just fine. No need to hate on the sweet girl. I love Ben Chu coming out and setting the record straight. Fuck yeah. We don't see Bretterhoff again. That's exactly right. I totally agree, Heather. Um, where can I buy a tampon and butt soap immediately asking for a friend? <laughs> I didn't know these were going to be so popular. Man, I would have created, um, uh, yeah, what are they talking about? Um, that's how I see them using it. I don't. Yeah, okay, irrelevant. Um, let's see, they're playing the interview out of order. All right, what kind of commercials should we do?
Court TV, shut the fuck up. <laughs> they're doing the dra- they're doing drag it out. Love your content, DUI guy. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you so much. Go Vasquez. Oh shoot. Right, let's make, make me bigger. There we go. Um, thank you for muting those noises. <laughs> Got that right. Uh, deep down in Louisiana, close to New Orleans, uh, way back up in the woods among the evergreens, there stood a log cabin made of earth and wood where lived a country boy named Johnny B. Good. Those sound like lyrics. Do you ever think Elaine will go on court TV for an interview to even the score? Fuck no. She's running with her cattail behind her legs, between her legs, whatever. After backing out the first time. No, I think she backed out for good reason. And now she has absolutely um, no purpose in coming back. All right. What sort of uh, commercials do you guys want while these people are talking? Amica cream? New. New. From L'Oreal Paris, you have seen Il de Toilette, the Ember Turd story. Femme Fecale. Now, new from L'Oreal Paris. Wait, I already forgot what the hell I'm advertising. Amica cream. Amica cream. You can use it for genital sores and cold sores. Sometimes it works to cover up marks from getting beat up by your boyfriend. Ben Chu coming up. Don't go anywhere. Wait. His reaction to the statements from Elaine Bredehoff, Amber Heard's attorney, what she said, and then Ben's reaction, you do not want to miss it. Okay, Sherry, I'm not going to lie. That's fucking funny. This interview is all over the place, like Elaine's closing arguments. That's straight up so true. Life alert commercial. We noticed Vinnie Politan talking. Do you need a tranquilizer? Life alert. <clears throat> when I was but a young girl, I did not need any of those things. However, now in my advanced age, I require assistance from time to time. This is when my daughter got me this wonderful button. It is the life alert button. The life alert, I press it if I fall and I step on a bee and break my knee. I press this button and help arrives. Oh, thank you, daughter. Life alert. In case you step on a bee and break a knee, press the button and help is on the way. All right, what else we got? <laughs> um, oh, did I ever finish the Emica cream? Emica cream for genital sores, cold sores, and that's about it. Sometimes if you get beat up by the boyfriend or the girlfriend, you can use it, and then it does absolutely fuck nothing. So I don't know what the purpose, just, just genital sores, basically. So, yep, from L'Oreal. Don't forget about Femme Fecal. Um... You had us rolling. Do a jingle next. Folgers. Nah, that's boring. Let's do something original. Chuck Berry song, Johnny B. Good. That's what I figured. Um, Bruce Kid commercial. Oh. Uh, too soon, you guys. Too soon. Too soon. Um, fiber, are you having trouble pooping on your loved one's bed? Well, new from Kellogg, fiber stuff to allow you to poop on your lover's bed without an issue. <laughs> Han, can you pass me the Kellogg's poop stuff? What's wrong, baby? What are you doing over there? I am trying to pop a squat on our marital bed, and I'm having trouble. Mm. Well, new from Kellogg's. Here you go. 
Nom, 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 nom. Oh, fantastic. I have soiled the marital bed. Thank you, Kellogg's. Laundry commercial to get rid of your bed turd stains. Has Kel have you purchased a Kellogg's poop machine lately? Have you been soiling your marital bed? Well, new from Tide. Poop goners. Just pop them in the washing machine along with your marital bed stuffs. And then it cleans it. I mean, that's what else do you expect it to do? It's fucking Tide. Just don't eat it, you fuck nuts. Milani color corrector. Nope, staying away from that one for now. Too soon, fam. What was going on with Ben and his rapid blinking? He doesn't do that in earlier interviews. I think he's overstressed. I think he's legitimately like stressed the fuck out. Like, legitimately. Dot com. <laughs> We're asking you to finally hold this man responsible. He has never accepted responsibility for anything in his life. You've Thank you, heard Tommy Kratz. Time. He hasn't admitted to anything. He's blamed everybody in the world, his agent, his manager, his lawyer, Amber, his friends, everybody. But he's never accepted responsibility for a thing he's done in his life. That was Amber Heard's attorney, Elaine Bredehoff, I'm during dead her sober. closing argument during the Just trial. Red now, Bull. after the verdict came in, Elaine Bredehoff sat down Gives for an wings. interview with the Today Show, where she talked about Amber's reaction to the jury's decision. You know, one of the first things she said is, Boo. I am so sorry to all those Boo. women out there. This is a setback for all women Boo. in and outside the courtroom. And I, she feels it, and she feels the burden of that. In her interview with uh, Depp's attorney, Chanley Painter gave Benjamin Chu the opportunity to respond to some of the statements that Elaine Bredehoff made on the Today Show. Ow. I want to talk about uh, Heard's lead attorney, Elaine Bredehoff. She made some post-verdict interviews as well uh, last week. In fact, I was supposed to sit down with her. She had to cancel last minute, uh, something urgent in court. Uh, we haven't yet rescheduled, but that offer is obviously still out there for her. But I want to give you the opportunity to address some of the things that she did say uh, last week to the media. Uh, she claims that your team demonized uh, Amber Heard and suppressed evidence. What's your response? I think it's disappointing that she would say something like that with respect to suppression of evidence there was a lot more evidence that came in in fairfax county than ever came in in london and i i took that uh as not being complimentary of our judge who was a wonderful judge i i don't think i just think that's an improper characterization as far as demonization the cross-examination of misheard that was done, I believe, beautifully by Camille Vasquez, was not intended to demonize her. It really was predicated on her own words. So the cross-examination was based on statements that Ms. Heard had made and presenting her with some audios that she herself had made and really asking for her explanation. I don't think that's demonization. I think that's cross-examination. Right. She points to medical records, uh, text messages from Stephen Duders, things like that. Would that have made a difference? Can you enlighten us on? I don't believe any of the evidence that was excluded. And there was evidence excluded on both sides. And you're very familiar. There are rules of evidence that exactly. apply. Not everything comes in. Right. Yeah, and suppression may not be the best word, too, that she uses. Right. It's inadmissible because of hearsay or... They're it's not relevant. Or exactly. And I, I think that I think her honor, you know, played it right down the middle, was very See, consistent in her rulings. And I, I think she it's an improper right. characterization and perhaps she just misspoke. Sure. Okay. Another thing, uh, Elaine said that this verdict is a huge setback for women. Uh, thinking about reporting domestic violence would send a message that they cannot win. What's your team's response? To I think that's entirely untrue. And Mr. Depp would want people to come forward if they were victims of domestic like abuse. Him. So I don't think this is a setback at all for women or men who have been victimized by domestic abuse. 
and I think this is a I think this is a victory for truth. I think that's I, I, I don't think it's a setback at all. Elaine also pointed to the jury as possibly even being tainted by the masses of amount of media. This was all over social media, as you probably know, and even blaming the cameras in the courtroom for possibly tainting this verdict. What do you think? That was almost more disappointing than her statement about evidence being kept out because I construed that as an affront to the jury. I mean, the jury took an oath, as you know, not to look at social media. The jury, like, and fuck's sake. there's no as basis Elaine that oh, the jury violated disgusting. their oath. And these are people, and you saw them every day, who gave up six weeks of their lives, of their work, of their family, to pay attention not only to the evidence that Mr. Depp put forward, but also to the evidence Ms. Heard put forward. Right. And to cast a shadow on them, I think, was really unfortunate and, and disappointing. Yeah, there was a statement even recently that Heard's team released. I'm sure you've also read this, but I wanna get your take. The spokesperson for Amber says, it is as unseemly as it is unprofessional well, that Johnny Depp's legal team Who? has chosen to Who do a victory this? lap for setting back decades of how women can be treated in the courtroom. What's next, a movie deal and merchandising? That was the latest statement. What's your response to that? The response to that, was one day after the verdict, I believe it was one day after the verdict, Ms. Bredehoff appeared on national programs uh, to set forth Ms. Hurd's position. So this is a, a response to that. I want to bring back in Chanley Painter, Court TV legal correspondent in New York City tonight. Um, Chanley, did you get any feeling for what the nature of the relationship is between the two legal teams is the, I don't even know if they knew each other beforehand but is it is it bad blood or is it just hey we did battle and and we move on you know I I always have my eye out for inside the courtroom maybe when the cameras aren't on when the attorneys arrive in the morning during a recess you can see them interacting in the courtroom you can see them interacting in the hallway always professional they do battle when the jury's in there right they each have their position they advocate for but i'm noticing the attorneys um greeting each other uh, complimenting each other on what they're wearing shaking hands and that's important i think to carry that professionalism on and so even though they have polar opposite points of view that is important to carry with them and, and, and how he even responded to that. I mean, uh, to Johnny Depp's team, you know, he is the domestic abuse survivor and his story is one that they hope sends a resounding message that inspires any victim, man or woman, to speak up, live their truth, fight for that truth. Live and of course, you truth. have Amber Rose's oh, team who that, advocates that she was actually the victim and the jury just didn't believe yeah, that version of the story. Wasn't. Yeah. That's right. Somebody won, somebody lost, and it was very clear at the end of the case. Uh, Chandler's going to stand by. I want to bring back in our guest, Dr. Robbie Ludwig, Lamar nope, Moj nope, no and Philip no, Dubé you. still no, with no, us. No, no, uh, Lamar, nope. let me ask you. Um, nope, what, no guests. Thank what you did you very think much. of? All right. Back to our favorite commercial break. I, apparently, uh, you guys are eating this up. I'm not sure why. It, it sounds like psychosis coming out of me, but for some reason, people are enjoying it, so I'll take it. Um, Hold on, let me get through some more super chats real quick as I update this right here. Okay, here we go. Um, super chats were coming in hot. Let me let me do these real quick. Uh, is it possible Court TV is trying to establish a positive spin on Johnny Depp since the media has presented a different spin to those that actually watch the trial? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, they're doing an interview of, of um, Ben Chu, the man himself. You know, him and Camille just ran this whole thing. Um, to the fucking finish line. So yeah, I agree. Uh, has to send this. You're cracking me up. This is way better than the crappy commercial and that rambling anchor. Why, thank you. Excuse me. DY guy side hustle. Improv comedy. Duff beer commercial. Are you tired of regular beer like Coors Light? Bud Light? Miller, like, what's with all this fucking light beer? I don't like light. I like heavy. Try new from Futurama. Duff beer. Nuff said. Look, 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 look. This tastes like shit. 
I like it. Um, I vote for the next commercial to be an eye drops commercial. <laughs> um, have you been smoking too much marijuana? Are your eyes so bloodshot? They look like fucking cherry red tomatoes. New from Clear Eyes. Try Clear Eye eye drops. Glop, 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 glop. Mom, I swear to God, I'm not fucking stoned. <laughs> I believe you, Sammy. See, it fucking worked. Um, Wayne Dennison definitely slayed it up there. Here for the truth. Poop's gone. Laundry detergent. Yes. Yes, we did that one. Uh, let's see what else we got. <clears throat> We need stickers. Yes, we do. Interesting music choices between Maiden and Dead Mouse. Oh, yeah, I'm all over the place. Appreciated your jury insights during the trial. Looking forward to more content. Fuck yeah. Thank you, Vivek. Iron Maiden, excellent. Air guitar. Meow, 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 meow. Um... Looking for more super chats, making sure I don't miss any. Okay. All right. I think we're Ben and Larry's ice cream. Uh, are you tired of ice cream that tastes like shit? New from Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Larry's. We got flavors like Tide Pods and Staples. Try new Ben and Larry's ice cream. Mm. <coughs> this ice cream is so good. Um, turd be gone commercial. Has an Amber Heard entered your life? Oh, what is that smell? It smells like a Johnny in here. I am out of here. Bye, bitch. Go step on a bee somewhere else. I don't need you up in this hizzy. Turd be gone. One spray and the Amber's gone. Herd protein bars? No, I'm sorry. Those don't exist. <laughs> Smells like a grumpy. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are killer. Oh, oh, I like that. Hold on. Uh, Jessica Myers too. Ben uh, and, and Camille especially were strategic face and gender team effort. Oh, wait. We're back. And Chew. A little bit of the reaction to the verdict next. All right, let me do this one real quick. Mega Pine commercial. Are you tired of the same old fucking small, tiny, goddamn containers? Well, new from Peanut Neuer. Mega Pine. It is as big as the most American fucking thing you will ever see in your goddamn short-lived diabetes-filled life. Mega Pint, 64 ounces of nothing but fucking 12% red fucking wine to get you so messed up, you will not remember what your goddamn name is. New Mega Pint from Peanut Neuer. <laughs> Mega pint. Go fucking get one. <laughs> oh, man. To I already did a toothpaste one. Um, mouthwash. Does your mouth smell like shit? Get some mouthwash, you cuck. I 
a what if anything cures snow snake oil. I love these ideas. You guys are awesome. Um, are you having trouble making arguments in court? New from lawyers. A what if anything. Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor, I'm trying here. Your Honor. <clears throat> Excuse me, Your Honor. One second. What's that? Oh, thank you. Your Honor, what if anything, I can ask you just about everything? Ah, objection overruled. Fantastic. Your Honor, what if anything have you been smoking? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What if anything am I even doing here? Mm, standing ovation in the background. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Dun, da, da, da. Super lawyer, new. What if anything? Cure all snake oil. What if anything? You shut up. You're too young to be doing this shit. Sorry, mommy. Um, oh my fucking lord. Realtor selling ECB penthouses. Uh, Kelly D, when you do that voice, it sounds like Elaine imitated Johnny. Holy shit balls. Thank you for the $360 donation. Lauren Ketty, I've seen you before. How are you? Holy crap. Um, couch equals every time I see that, I think of Ross from Friends. Equal pivot like Amber Heard does with her truth. Complete and false accusations slash allegations. Amber Heard makes me sick. <clears throat> Vomit. Amber Heard spews and literally shits the bed. Amber Heard's future work commercials, ads, adult diapers, life alert. Oh, mommy. Um, Amber Heard. Oops, I did it again. Sorry, I'm the one that cries wolf. And she will never be believed again. Hashtag liability. Frame it. Add it. Box it. That's what's up. Thank you, Lauren Ketty. Holy crap. Elaine Bobbleheads ad. All right. Time to get back to uh, the interview you were showing you. Chad Major sitting down with Ben Chu, Johnny Depp's lead attorney, here talking about the verdict. Uh, when the verdict came in, our hearts were in our throats. We we were hopeful, but not presumptuous. So we were we were really sweating it out. It took nearly thirteen Ooh. hours for the jury to reach this verdict. And as an attorney, I know that nothing. can be you know really anxiousness going through what you were thinking. Uh, can you take us to that moment? Were you were you having any doubts in those hours of deliberations? We were we were anxious, but we cut the anxiety by playing a ferocious game of Monopoly in our room. So that's the, it distracted us sufficiently, but we were, we were still thinking about the verdict. Sure. And of course we had this sure. false start, if you will. We're all gathered in the courtroom. It's almost three o'clock and the jury didn't fill out the damages portion of the verdict form. When you find for a defamatory statement, um, one or more, you need to fill out the compensatory damages. It has to be at least a dollar for compensatory damages and up to whatever you feel the damages should be. Uh, and for punitive damages, you can put a zero there or you can fill out that as well. But I need those uh, lines filled out, okay? All right, so if I can have you retire back to the deliberation room and do that for me, okay? You guys approach the bench with the judge. What did she say in that moment? Did you know what was happening in that moment or what the verdict may have been? We didn't, and it, we were hoping that she might give us some clues, but she's played it straight down the line and said that the jury had reached a verdict on, as to one of the statements, but had not filled but they out seemed a damage. So happy. And she was apprising counsel for both sides that, that her of her intent to orally instruct them to put in a damages number. But we didn't know whether that was a statement on the counterclaim or one of the affirmative three stat, uh, statements in Mr. Depp's case. But you knew someone had at least one statement against the we other. Knew that Did you have some, a good feeling? Um, we didn't dare have a good feeling. We felt really good about how the evidence came in, and we thought Johnny did a magnificent job finally having his say. But 
uh, the jury was very hard, at least very hard for us to read. Out this verdict, this, Not it's a for split me. verdict, right? I mean, overwhelming I, win for your team. The jury clearly believing Johnny outsider. Depp's version of events, but they did also find at least one of those statements in the countersuit said by Adam Waldman, the attorney for Johnny Depp, was defamatory towards Amber Heard. How do you make sense of that? Well, I, I think it actually is consistent, and I would agree with your characterization. This is an overwhelming victory for Johnny as to all three of his statements and as to two of the three statements at issue in the counterclaims in which Mr. Waldman characterized Ms. Hurd's claims as a hoax. I think that as to the one that the jury found liability on, it was a convoluted statement with a lot of moving pieces in it about what Amber's friends did on that particular night, May 21, 2006, uh, 2000, uh, yeah, 16. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was really very difficult to prove. So that was not a total surprise, nor do I think it was in any way inconsistent with what the jury did in affirming Johnny's claims and in knocking out the other two. Let's talk about Johnny. He wasn't there in the courtroom during the reading of the verdict. Should he have been there? He wanted to be there, uh, but he had a prior commitment with Jeff Beck, who is a close friend of his, to play in England. So he was he was torn, but he is a man who fulfills his obligations, and he had an obligation to uh, to Jeff Beck. But he made very clear in a statement, which you probably saw, that he this that he had profound respect for the court and for the jury and for all of you who spent so much time there in Fairfax County. So his not being there was in no way intended to be disrespectful, to the contrary. Right. And how did he find out being across the pond? I believe that he was in a pub watching yeah. it. And we weren't, obviously we couldn't share that moment with him, but we did FaceTime him and he he looked like the weight of the world was off of his shoulders. and. It, yeah. Tell us more about his reaction. And I see you becoming emotional. You became emotional during closings, too. Yeah. I mean, well, how could his you? life is how on could the you line. Not? So Look we at felt him. very oh, strongly. And we felt strongly He's so that sweet. he did not do anything Aww. remotely like this. And we all felt that way or we wouldn't have been working on it. Aww. So. And I could see that every day. You know, I was there in the courtroom. I watched Oops. how you interacted with your client. You know, as an attorney, that's so important. You could see the bond that you have. He's a great guy. I mean, he, he's got a terrific sense of humor. And the fact that he My could bad. show that when the worst possible details about his life were being exhumed on an international stage. I mean, he knew when he had us file this case that there was going to be embarrassing, humiliating information about his personal life, mm -hmm. and yet he did this anyway. And it was because the charge against him Ask about the candy. was so <laughs> heinous and something with which his children should not have to live. Right. And considering ah. that, did you also have to sort of prep him for the worst as well in the outcome of this case? We we did, and I think he was quite cognizant of that in light of what happened in London. And we went through a mediation, and you know the mediator was candid about um, defamation cases. As you know, are very hard to prevail on, even under the best of circumstances. Um, so this, yeah, I think he went into it um, eyes wide open. You kind of took my next question. Was he aware of what a long shot this was? Because like you said, the, the law for actual malice and defamation, especially from a plaintiff, is difficult. It's a high burden. It's a very high burden. I think he understood that. But I think he felt that he had no other choice but to try to get the truth out and to have his say. And I think irrespective of the verdict, I think he was pleased that he had a fair opportunity to be heard. So I think either way, no pun intended. I think he he had the satisfaction of having his say. And uh, it's been about a week now. Have you talked to him recently? How's he doing? Um, he seems to be doing fine. He's quite busy. He's doing shows with Jeff Beck. And nice. I think he's finally able to breathe. One of his friends said that he hasn't seen Johnny smile like this since 2016. Wow. Let me bring back in Core TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter. That's powerful. Fresh off this interview, Chanley. Uh, an amazing moment there. He got emotional, Ben Chu did. Yeah. 
Yeah, he did, Vinny. Uh, he, I could tell that his his eyes were welling up with tears, and I, I just wanted to give him that moment to express what he was feeling. He was really reliving the verdict and what mm. that meant for his client. You know, would you, if you think back to closing arguments, he actually became emotional when he was arguing those those final uh, tidbits to the jury about what this means to Johnny Depp, that he needs his life back. He's doing this for his children. And again, he had tears in his eyes, which really goes to show how invested <laughs> he is in his client how much he believes in Johnny Depp yes and you know this was a civil case you know civil cases about generally damages money etc um, but it really brought home the point that this was uh, much much more and it was the kind of reaction we see sometimes with criminal attorneys who were literally have clients lives in their hands like me, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, this is some a relationship between Ben Chu and Johnny Depp that has been years in the making. He's represented Johnny in previous matters, litigation matters, and he's still representing him in a couple of other uh, legal matters moving forward. I did get to ask, you know, what is next for Johnny Depp? Everyone keeps asking what's next. And, of course, he's going to keep himself busy playing music, but also he has a movie coming up in France, Vinny, later this year. All right, Chanley Painter, job well done, as always. Enjoy the Big Apple. Get a slice. Talk to you later. A slice of Think what? Think Tank next, their reaction to Chanley's interview. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going everywhere. We're going bye-bye. Later. Thank you. All right, well, that was the interview. Uh, that was phenomenal. Let's read some more Super Chats. Um, question, Amber Heard is the setback for DV survivors. Uh, why won't she just give up? because she doesn't know how to a classic case of narcissism. She's unable to move on. She's already lost. She knows it's done. She knows it's over and done with. I, it, it, she doesn't know how to quit. That's the problem. And she, I don't know if she ever will uh, do a commercial offering legal consultation for anyone who has failed to convince a jury. They were beat up while using Amica cream. That's for later Ch kids. We got to build up to that one. I can't, I can't lead with that. That's a little too extreme. Um, if an Amber Heard turd in the forest, <laughs> if an Amber Heard a turd in the forest, seashells, seashells in the seashells, uh, would anyone hear it? I oh, don't fucking know. Probably not because it would be soft and stooly. The best part of waking up is Larry in my cup. Now, 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 now. Um, have you not had your morning coffee? Well, new from the DUI guy, Foreman in a cup. I will wake you the fuck up, motherfucker. Uh, do I have PayPal? Yeah, I linked it on the thing over here. Uh, Tamponia, dude, you have a girlfriend. I know. I, I don't. I don't read her boxes of what she uses. Like. I couldn't think of anything. And, you you know, with, with um, what's it called? With improv, you have to, like, be on the spot. So if you can't think of anything, you just make it up. So I, I couldn't think of anything. And Tamponia was just fucking hilarious. Do a Botox ad saying it's give you bruises that can be covered up by bruise kids. Bah, ha, 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 please, please. Um, how would I even do that? New from Botox. Do you lack any bruises, a.k.a. fake proof that your significant other beats you? Well, new from Botox. Inject here and here. Voila. Fake bruises. That's all I got. Sorry. Riddles of Steel, thank you for the super chat. Very generous of you. Uh, super sticker, I mean. I can't believe her lie got so out of hand, like the effort it took watching from Ireland. Also heard you on the radio. Oh, yeah, I, I did that radio thing. Thanks very much. Well, thank you very much. No. Um, how to stop smoking by eating jelly beans. Are you addicted to cigarettes? Well, stop it. Larry, if you want me to send you the 365, oh, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's just, it's super chat. Don't worry about it. I just, somebody asked for the, the PayPal, so I linked it. Um, Karma Turtle? What? 
<clears throat> Someone take that shovel away from Elaine for real. Do a commercial for nipple mustaches cream. What is a nipple mustaches cream? Do your nipples have hairs that are so ingrown they look like they have little Hitler mustachios on them? Well, new from Amica Cream, mustache nipple be gone. Just wipe that fucker on and wake up the next morning with a little bit of wax tape and just kind of peel it off and then it goes away. That's about it. Um, thank you for the super sticker, Gina. Very much appreciated. Well, I think that's it, you guys. I mean, um, I think that's it. It's been an, uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been fun. Thank you for joining me. I had a lot of fun. If you like this kind of shit, which I don't know why anyone would, don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I go live. And uh, we're just going to continue pumping out some fucking amazing content for you all. Um, yeah, this interview was very good, very well done, but I think they could have condensed it to like, 20 minutes and just called it a day they did not need to stretch it out into an hour but i get it it's it's television i get it whatever it is what it is you're gonna do what you're gonna do so thank you all for joining me i had so much fun doing this um but i swear i did not think that i was gonna turn into the the commercial break <laughs> this is uh this has been fun thank you all See you all next time. Love every single one of you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I will see you in the next commercial break. <laughs>